Hello everyone and welcome back. In this session, we are going to learn about the instruction types LXIRP, D16 and MVIM, D8. Remember, we have been learning about the different instruction types which fall under the category of data transfer group of instructions. So without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the topics that we are going to cover in this session, at first we will learn about the instruction type LXIRP, D16. Thereafter, we will learn about the instruction type MVI M, D8. So let's begin with the first instruction type, that is LXIRP, D16. Now, before we proceed ahead and decode this entire instruction type, let me take you back to the previous session. If you remember, in that session, we studied about the instruction type MOVR, M. Now, this is register indirect addressing, that is, if we wanted to move the data from a particular memory location in the accumulator register, we executed the instruction MOVA, M. But before that, within the HL pair, we had to load the data F8 to 1. Now tell me, how can we load the data F8 to 1 in the HL register pair? We can use the instructions that we have learned so far that are at first, we can use the instruction MVIH, F8H, which specifies that the higher order byte, that is F8, is to be moved immediately into the register H. Thereafter, we can use another instruction MVIL, 21H, which will specify that the lower order byte of the address will have to be moved immediately into the register L. Now, by the time these two instructions have been executed, within the HL register pair, the data F821 will be loaded. And thereafter only, we can execute this instruction MOVA, M. Now, let me show you how all these instructions will be stored within the memory. Now, as I told you earlier, within the memory, we are not going to store the mnemonics, rather, we will be storing their opcodes. Now say the starting address of the program is 3000. That is, the first opcode of the program, which will be the opcode for MVIH, will be loaded in this memory location. Now I hope you remember, these two instructions are of two bytes long, right? So this will have the opcode, and we are providing the immediate data of 8 bit here also. So, cumulatively, this is of 2 byte size. Now, from the chart that we have seen already, if you notice, MVIH has the opcode 26. So, at first, 26 will be loaded into the memory location 3000. And thereafter, the 8 bit data, which is F8, will be loaded in the next, that is the subsequent memory location 3001. So, let's load that. Now, notice we have loaded the entire 2-byte instruction into these two memory locations. Coming to the next instruction, MVIL, 21H. The opcode for MVIL is 2E. So in the memory location 3002, we are going to load the opcode 2E. And the 8-bit data, which is 21, is going to be loaded into the subsequent memory location 3003. So let's load that. Now we have loaded both the instructions in all these spaces. Now finally, we will load this instruction. I know I haven't told you the opcode for this. However, this instruction falls under the category of one byte long. So in order to store this instruction within the memory, the next memory location 3004 will be used. Now I'll tell you how to decode the opcodes for these kind of instructions later. But for now, just know this, the opcode for MOVA, M is 7E. Now observe. In order to store the first two instructions, we used 4 bytes of memory space. Now is there any way we could reduce this size? Well, you might be wondering, we have got so many memory locations within the memory, then why should we look for something which can reduce the size? But think about it. In this memory, there are 64K memory locations and each one of them can store one byte. 
So this memory, which is associated to the 8085 microprocessor, it's just a 64 kilobyte memory. It's not like the memories that we have today in our computers or in our smartphones. It is way lesser than that. So for that purpose, we can look for something which will require less space. And there, the instruction LXI RP, D16 will come at rescue. Now the mnemonic LXI, it stands for Load Extended Register Immediate. Now if you remember, in our programmer's view of H085, the registers B, C, D, E, H and L, these can also be used as register pairs, right? Now let me tell you what this instruction does. Using this type of instruction, we actually are trying to load a register pair with a 16-bit value. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we are talking about the register pairs. So these are BC, DE, and HL. These are also called the extended registers. Now, why these are called like this? I'll describe that in a moment. But first know, within this instruction, we are providing the 16-bit data with the instruction itself. So, it is an immediate addressing. Now, let me decode the entire instruction. As I already told you, LXI stands for Load Extended Register Immediate. Now, here we are talking about RP, that is, these register pairs. Now, what is D16? Well, just like D8, D16 means data of 16-bit. So, what do you think? What will be the size of these type of instructions? Notice this, LXIRP will have 8-bit and along with that we are providing data of 16 bits, right? So 16 more bits. So cumulatively, these type of instructions fall under the 3-byte long category. Now remember, this is just the type. We are yet to see the different instruction of this type. So the different instructions are LXIB, D16, LXID, D16, LXIH, D16. Now notice, within the real instructions, we are not mentioning the register pairs. We are just mentioning the first register. And this is the reason why we call it extended register. Whenever we have this X, it will mean for this instruction, C, is the extension of the register B. Similarly, for this instruction, E is the extension of the register D. And the same goes for the last instruction, LXIH, D16. Through this instruction, the microprocessor knows that the register L is now the extension of the register H. So do remember, whenever we are using any mnemonic where we have X in it, we will not mention the entire register pair, only the first register will be sufficient. Now let's get back to our problem. We can solve that problem of storage space with this instruction. So, before MOVA comma M, instead of performing immediate moving, we could have used the instruction LXIH comma F821H. Notice, we are only using two instructions now. Previously, we were using three different instructions and the first two were taking two bytes of spaces. Now, using the first instruction, which is LXIH, F821H, this will help the HL pair to get the value immediately F821. Here, 21, that is the lower order byte, will be loaded into the L register and the higher order byte that is F8 will be loaded into the H register. Basically, L register is being used as an extension of the H register and that's being specified by this instruction. Now, once this is done, then we can easily execute this instruction MOVA comma M. Now, what do you think? How much storage space within the memory these two instructions will require? Well, for LXIH, the opcode for this is 21. Now, after loading this opcode within the memory location 3000, 
we will require two more bytes within the memory in order to store the 16 bit address. Now, I already told you within the memory of 8085, the addresses are stored in reverse order. That is, at first, the low order byte will be loaded, which in this case is also 21. So, this will be loaded into the memory location 3001. And then in the location 3002, the higher order byte that is F8 will be loaded. And finally, we will also have to load the second instruction that is MOVA comma M. I already have told you the opcode for this is 7E. Notice, the first instruction is requiring 3 bytes of space. Now, you might be wondering, in case of this instruction, the opcode for LXI H is 21. Also, we have got the low order address byte as 21, which is stored in the next instruction. Now, how will the microprocessor will differentiate which is the opcode for the mnemonic and which is the low order address byte? Well, for that, the instruction decoder will be responsible. And how that's going to function, we will learn in the later chapters. So, for now, notice this thing. With the help of this instruction, we reduced one byte memory space. So, that is all about the LXI RPD16. Remember, this is a 3 byte long instruction and LXI stands for Load Extended Register Immediate. D16 here is the 16 bit value which will be immediately loaded into the register pair which has been mentioned in the instruction. Also, whenever we are using X in any mnemonic, in those cases, the entire register pair will not be mentioned. Only the first register will be mentioned and the second register will be treated as an extension of that register. So, that was all about the instruction type LXI RP, D16. Let's now learn about the next instruction type that is MVIM, D8. Now, coming to this instruction MVIM, D8. I believe you remember the mnemonic for MVI from the previous sessions. Remember, it stands for move immediate. And using these type of instructions, we are going to load a particular memory location with an 8-bit value. Now, let me decode the instruction type. So, we have got the instruction type MVIM, D8. Well, to be accurate, this is the instruction type and there will be only one opcode for this. Because if you notice, in this instruction, we don't have to mention any register. The 8-bit data will directly be loaded to the memory location. Now, what do you think will be the size of this instruction? Well, for MVIM, it will require 8 bits of space. And along with that, we are sending the 8-bit data. So, cumulatively, this entire instruction will fall under the category of 2-byte long instructions. Now, let me illustrate the working of this instruction with the help of an example. Say we would like to execute the instruction MVIM, 3F. Now, we already know whenever we use this alphabet M, we are indirectly referring to the register pair HL. So, before executing this instruction, within the register pair HL, we will have to load the address of the memory location to which we would like to move the data in immediate addressing. Now, say, Within the HL pair, we have got the address F8 to 1. Once we store the address in it, the microprocessor will know that it is going to point to the memory location F8 to 1. Now, once this is done, and we already know this can be done using the instruction that we have learned just now, that is LXI RP, D16, or else we can also use the move immediate versions but that will require more space, right? So, once we have loaded this into the HL register pair, thereafter, if we execute this instruction, the data, that is 3F, which we are providing immediately within the instruction itself, is going to be loaded into the memory location, which is currently being pointed by the HL register pair. So, once we execute this, the immediate data 3F is going to be moved to the memory location F821. 
So this is how with the help of immediate addressing, we can move any data into the memory location directly. If you remember, in the previous example, we had the data within the accumulator register and thereafter we moved that particular data into the memory location. But if we have immediate data which has to be moved to a particular memory location, using this instruction is going to be a good practice. So that is all about the instruction type MVIM, D8. Remember, this is a 2 byte long instruction. MVIM will have an opcode of 8 bit. Additionally, we are sending 8 bit immediate data. So, in this session, we cover the topics the instruction type LXIRP, D16. Do remember the instructions of this type are 3 byte long instructions. And thereafter, we cover the instruction type MVIM, D8. Alright, people, that will be all for this session. In the next session, we are going to learn about some more data transfer group of instructions. So, I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.